Howdy folks, welcome to another video. This one today is going to be a little different. We're not going to define any terms, you don't have to learn any behaviors or actions. Just sit back and let me tell you a story about me. That's right gamers, I'm going to be talking about my personal identity and experiences as a transgender gay man. Uh, wait a minute, I didn't read that right, I think I missed something. As a very, very cool transgender gay man. Ever since I was a little dude, I always felt like there was something weird about me. I was assigned the sex female when I was born, so for the first 16 years of my life, I was considered a girl, which, as a guy, was weird. I used to think that it was my fault that I couldn't fit in, and like, some of it definitely was. I was a weird kid. Once I gaslit a bunch of my classmates into thinking that I was a T-Rex in a human suit, but then I started crying when I got the wrong color band-aid. Not because of the cut itself, no, I was a tough little dude, but the color of the band-aid. What kind of dinosaur does that? Maybe a Diplodocus. Yeah, it might be a Diplodocus. <laughs> But when I was little, I was really insecure and awkward, and I could just never figure out why. Finally, I learned what it meant to be transgender, but I was in denial about it for a long time due to a number of reasons. For one thing, I knew by then that I liked guys, and I didn't know that you could be trans and gay. Of course you absolutely can, but for some reason nobody ever told me that. So it was like this weird taboo concept, like going back and ordering a second dessert at a restaurant after you already finished your first. Once you do it though, it's actually pretty sweet. <laughs> by that time, puberty really got rocking and rolling. Let's give it up for puberty, woo! I just had to watch as my body transformed in a way that terrified me. It was bizarre. If you are cisgender, meaning you still identify as the gender you were assigned when you were born, just imagine if your body suddenly started changing to that of a different sex. Like if you're a girl with female anatomy and you like being a girl, but you just suddenly started growing a penis one day. Suddenly started growing a penis one day. Huh? We've all had a restaurant mess up our orders before, but what if they messed up and gave you the wrong body? I hate to be a Karen, but I gotta see the manager on this one. <laughs> This is a feeling called gender dysphoria. An intense gender dysphoria like this usually means people might be transgender. Gender is such a big deal, so dealing with gender dysphoria can actually be a really difficult problem. That means someone with gender dysphoria may feel uncomfortable in many of the clothes they have to wear, the pronouns people refer to them with, their own body, and even their name. But never a second dessert. A second dessert cures whatever ails you. In 8th grade, as part of our Who Am I unit, we ranked a bunch of identifying concepts like race, religion, age, all that stuff in the order that we considered them important to who we were. And I remember I put gender on the bottom of my list. I knew it didn't make me happy and I didn't want to think about why it made me uncomfortable, not to mention that I didn't want to put in years of my life to try and fix it, so I just pretended that it wasn't important at all. For a long time, I somehow thought that I didn't have what it took to be a man. Whatever that means. It's a free country, dude. There's no one kind of man, woman, or human. Just like it takes most cisgender guys years to figure out who they want to be, it took me a while too. But once I figured out that I was a Hawaiian shirt-wearing, frisbee-playing, funky-haired, music-nerd, epic dude, bro, it was well worth the wait. Eventually, I came to terms with the fact that I was trans, by getting 100% on a BuzzFeed quiz. Huh. But I still didn't tell anyone for years, so my identity was secret, which is called being in the closet. This was because of a bunch of small things, like the fact that I didn't know what bathroom I could use if I came out of the closet, or what gender my college roommate would be. Also, this doesn't seem like a valid reason to stay in the closet for years, but I just didn't like the transgender pride flag. I mean, it is kind of one of the weaker pride flags. Like, the pink and the light blue, those are like colors that we associate with babies. I'm not a baby. My mom says I'm a big boy. Now we have single stall gender neutral bathrooms in school, thanks to the SAA club. And once you get used to it, pink and blue is actually pretty sick. But I was also in the closet for a lot of big reasons too. 
I was just really afraid that I wouldn't be accepted by my friends or family, and I never knew another trans person, not to mention a gay trans person, so I had no idea what to expect. The only things I had ever heard about trans people were the stuff I saw in the news about how they struggled academically, socially, and mentally way more than cisgender people. And I was like, nah, bro, that's not for me. I had no idea that it was possible to be trans and happy and successful and cool. I thought that if someone figured out I was trans, all my dreams would crumble and I would be doomed forever. And then came everybody's favorite pastime, quarantine. That's right, 2020 came around and I got a whole lot of introspective alone time. I realized how much my gender identity really meant to me, and I figured I couldn't hide it anymore. I first told my friends, since I knew they would be supportive, and I needed some good, strong support to work up to telling my parents. Once I did tell them, all sitting together at the family dinner table, there was a lot of surprise and confusion. It definitely messed with the vibe. Which is totally normal in this situation. There's just not an easy way to do it. But I did it! I told them I wanted to be a man, cut my hair, change my name, and go by he, him pronouns. And it took a lot of adjusting, but it worked. Coming out is a long process that doesn't end with one conversation. It took me a while to figure out my new identity, and a lot of times right after I came out, I felt even more alone than ever. It was like I was running through a maze, and everyone else I knew was behind a wall of glass. They were cheering me on, but I was still so separate, alone, and lost. And that's totally okay. Bro, if people weren't made to get lost, we wouldn't have search and rescue teams. It's all part of the process, man. And this process is processing along pretty positively, partner. Now I'm 18, I've been out of the closet for over two years, and I'm rocking it. I recently changed my legal name to Sturgeon Moritz, and I just started taking testosterone injections. This will allow me to eventually have a low voice, bigger muscles, and hopefully even facial hair. But first I have to get acne and a bunch of voice cracks and... Wait a minute. That sounds like... Could it be? Puberty to the sequel! Of course, I also founded and currently lead the MCDS Social Awareness and Activism Club. I co-lead the Sexuality and Gender Equality Club. I'm also the membership manager for the Dane County Youth Environmental Committee. I'm in Model UN, the school musical production, the high school jazz band. I've got my own YouTube channel where I compose and record my own original songs. I've got a full tuition scholarship to my dream college. And best of all, I have tons of awesome friends and I feel really good about myself. I'm a lot of things, but at the end of the day, I'm just a guy. Ever since I was little, I knew there was something weird about me, but there's something weird about everyone, and that's what makes us human. Whether you're gay, straight, trans, or cis, we're all just people trying to be cool. And if you try hard enough, who knows?